Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things we're gonna have to do is go ahead and start removing this area. To get this off, if you were to look inside the handle, you're gonna find a small panel. Ours is already loose, but if you were to just come inside this corner area, there's gonna be a tab you can grab with a pick or a small screwdriver. You'd wanna carefully grab onto it and just carefully pull it up and away. We'll give that a quick inspection. Now if you were to look underneath this, we're gonna continue on by removing our two Phillips head screws. Now let's continue on to a plastic trim tool. We're gonna carefully try to get underneath this area without damaging our door or even the plastic paneling. Now as I lift this up along the back side, I wanna pay attention along the forward side. If you were to look, you're gonna find that you have this tab that goes underneath this. So if you were to try to pry up under here, you're more than likely gonna break this. Let's carefully turn this over. Now we're gonna move along to disconnecting our wiring. Let's move to this area where I'm squeezing and then I can pull this up and off. We'll give it a quick inspection and then we can set it aside. Now let's move along to the rest of our electrical connectors. We're gonna squeeze on this little tab right here with a small pocket screwdriver and carefully pull this out. Give it a quick inspection, set that aside. We're gonna do the same to this one. We'll go ahead and turn that around for this one, there's a much larger tab. Just go ahead and squeeze that in and pull this out. Set this aside. Let's go ahead and move along to our inside door handle. If you were to look behind the handle itself, you're gonna find that you have a rectangular slit in the area. I'm gonna use a small 90 degree pick Get in between this area and I'll carefully pull it away from the door. Behind that, you're gonna find one Phillips head screw. Go ahead and remove it. Let's continue with our plastic trim tool. We're gonna slide it in between this area and we're gonna carefully pop this away from the door. Now at this point, you don't actually physically remove this from the door panel. It's attached down along the bottom. Now let's continue on with the plastic trim tool and we'll move down along the bottom of the door. The area that we're trying to get in between is the metallic aspect of the door and the plastic trim here. Just get up in between there and I'm gonna gently pry. There we are. Now we're gonna carefully start lifting this up and away from the door. Now as we pull this away, we wanna pay attention along the back side here. To separate this, we're gonna use a small pocket screwdriver and I wanna carefully try to press on this tab along the bottom. Once you press on that, you should be able to lift this up and away from the inside door handle. We'll just give this a quick inspection. Now we can remove the door panel. Let's move along to removing our weather barrier from this area. As I start pulling it down, I want to mention this black stuff right here. This is called butyl tape. It's extremely sticky, and if it gets on your clothes, it will ruin them. Let's go ahead and carefully start pulling this down. I want to be able to save this because we will be reusing the entire thing. There we go. Now we're gonna move along to the electrical connector that leads to the window motor. For this, if you were to look underneath it, you're gonna find a tab that you can carefully press on. We're just gonna press that up and then we can remove the wiring and give it a quick inspection. There's the tab I had to press on. You wanna give it a quick inspection? We can set this aside. Okay, so at this point, we can start dismounting the window motor from the window regulator. When we do this, we're gonna continue on by removing these three 10 millimeter headed screws.
Carefully grab that motor and remove it from the window regulator. Now we can put the window motor onto the window regulator. When you do this, you want to pay attention to the shaft that comes out of the window motor. Make sure it lines up with the corresponding hole in the regulator. Once you have it slid into position, you also want to make sure you line up all three of your mounting bolt holes. Now we can start in all three of our mounting bolts. For these, you never want to use any type of thread locker. Snug them up. Now we can start putting back on our vapor barrier. We want to make sure that we have the wiring going through it and of course our cable here. The cable is going to go through the smaller hole. Now if I stick this up close to position, we'll just let it hang and we're going to continue on with the wiring. That's going to come through this larger hole. We're going to have three electrical connectors that you have to slide through this. Now we can hang the vapor barrier back in place. We'll just make sure it's completely situated all the way around and then we can grab our door panel. Now we can continue on by putting on our door panel. There's going to be several areas that you want to pay attention to. One of them being the area that the door lock goes up through. And if you were to look at the back side, you're going to find that you have a whole bunch of little push tabs that need to fit into their corresponding holes in the door. And of course you have your door handle cable. Let's start with the door handle cable. Now for this, if you were to look at the end of the cable, you can see that it has this little bobble. Now that little bobble needs to fit in this area of the door handle. To put this in, it's going to be easiest if you grab some long nose pliers. I'm going to go ahead and pull on this cable, hold it in place, and then I'll grab it with my long nose pliers. Now we're just going to go ahead and twist this, and we're going to put it in position inside the inside door handle. Now once you have it put down inside there, you can go ahead and let go of the cable. We're going to make sure it's pressed in as far as we can. And now we're going to bring this area up and over the top here. Now as you can tell I have it slid into place, I'm going to go ahead and lock it down. Listen for a click, give it a nice tug to make sure it's secure. Now you're just going to want to double check it to make sure it's completely secured. You don't want it to fall off. If it did, of course it would be very difficult to open your door from the inside. Now we can take this and we're going to slide it in position. We're paying attention to the door lock and also up along this ridge right here. This ridge fits over the top of this area. Now we're going to pay attention down along the side here. I'm going to try to line up my push pins. Once it feels though they're lined up, it should want to just push right in. Make your way up here, lock this in as well. Double check your door to make sure it's completely situated all the way around. We can put in our upper mounting screw. Make sure that's nice and tight. Let's put this panel in here. Looking at the bottom, you can see that you have two locating tabs. We'll slide this in at an angle and then lock it in with the top. Now it's time to put in our master switch here. Give it a little click, give them a tug as you go. Now you just wanna go ahead and put all your wiring inside the door panel. As we bring this down, you wanna pay attention to this forward end. You remember when we were removing this, I mentioned it. You wanna go ahead and put that in first. 
Now we can swing this down, we'll lock it down, and then continue on with our two Phillips head screws. Now we can put on our inside cover. Pay attention to this area. You can see it has a little hook. That hook is gonna fit down into this area and then we'll roll it down to lock it in. Okay friends, we got our door panel put back together. At this point, it's a good idea to test everything. You saw that we took off the entire door panel to do this process, so everything that we had to disconnect needs to be double checked. Aside from that, thanks for watching.